Hi, we're the bright lights from St. Paul's Cathedral. Now, because of quarantine, we're not allowed in it right now. So, we've built a virtual St. Paul's Cathedral so we can present it to you in this bright light. So first of all, we're going to tell you the story of Easter Day. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb, and she saw that the stone had been removed. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and another disciple, and said, They've taken the Lord, and we don't know where they have laid him. So the two disciples ran together towards the tomb, and when they went in, they saw that Jesus was not there, but that the clothes where he'd been wrapped in were laid neatly. They didn't understand what had happened, and the disciples returned home. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. Now we're going to give you a little tour of our cathedral. This cross is what we, we're going to be doing in Bright Light today. Hi guys, and today we are celebrating Easter! Woo! Well, and we are going to be making a cross, but you should already know that. And what you'll need for this is a piece of paper or back of a cereal box or some card, cardboard, really whatever hard surface you could find. A hanger this could be metal it could be plastic like this one here it can be black white blue orange whatever color really next you'll need some wool some twine some string whatever whatever thing you can hang it up with next you'll need glue or tape some scissors a ruler and a pencil you 
could use some colouring pencils or some pens or whatever. You can also use crayons. Uh, but you will only need them, or you could use them anyway, if you're using white pieces of paper. But I'm not going to be doing that. Why am I? Yeah, you'll have to see. This is the dangerous bit. You'll need either a hole puncher, but since we they're, they're, it hasn't arrived yet, oh gosh. <laughs> We're using a nail and a soft item, also known as this poor soul that we're going to sacrifice. Okay, what you'll need first, I'm just going to safety first. What you'll need first is to take your piece of cardboard or cereal box or whatever you're using and cut it out. And cut it out. Okay, and now I've got this, this card. And then what you'll need to do is take your coloured paper. And I just seem to have lost mine and cut it up but luckily I have all these spares pre-cut and now what I'm going to do is just take my cross, take my glue or tape and just start putting them on there. Let's go. Okay, and once you've done that, you may have a little leftover, you can do all of them just just paper, or what you can what you can do if you want. This is only an if you want. Grab your colouring pencils or your watercolours or your crayons or your pens, whatever you're using, and I have quite a few white gaps there what you're gonna do is just lightly colour it in or shade it in or whatever you want to do with it okay i'm just going to do a quick look for my paintbrush and i'll be back in less than a minute I've acquired the paintbrush. Finishing. So after you've coloured it in, this is what you want to do. I'm just going to put these to the side for the moment. I think my cat doesn't knock the water off. What you're going to do is either use your hole punch for this or get adult supervision for this. It is dangerous. Use a na nail and a soft surface. What you're going to do is put it round about, I would say, round about here where the point, where it is, right there. And you just want to poke a hole. Make a hole big enough, and if it's too small for whatever you're putting in, just when it's in there, move it around in a circular motion. And make sure I have adult supervision for this, because if you poke yourself, that would be very painful. I know. Okay, so now that I've got a big enough hole, I'm going to put that back in there, make sure no cats get it. Cats on my bed. Who starred in the last video. I'm going to take this and bonus craft. Well, it's not really a craft, it's a, a skill. I'm going to teach you how to do a bow knot. A bow knot. So I'm just going to tie it. Oh, and I dropped it. I'm just going to loop it round, make a loop, make a tree. So let's pretend that's a hole and that's a tree. And this end is a snake. You want your snake to come 
from out of the hole, from behind it, in and through. Round the tree, if I can ever lift it up. Round the tree. And then back down the hole. And then pull the snake's head. Oh, that sounds very violent. The snake's head and the tree to create a bow knot. And now you have a bow knot. And now all your dreams can come true for knotting. So after you've done that, make sure you put it extra tight to make it extra secure. I'm just going to chop off the excess so it doesn't... So it doesn't look like a big loop. I've got my little bow knot there. But this, ah, what a wonderful sight. We're done, we're over. No, we're not. Next, you take your hanger and you take the end of your string. And you just want to do a second bow knot. Round about in the middle, but it doesn't really matter because it's going to move anyway. So I'll just do it quickly and I'll see you guys when I'm done. Then I'm just going to cut off the excess and now you can hang this up in, if you are, if you have a bear, you can hang it up with a bear if you are using, and if you are, if you have a rainbow in your window, you can hang it up next to that. Some of our friends who've been watching us online have sent in their very own Easter crafts. Look at these brilliant palm crosses that Arika and Oban have sent us. And a big shout out to Bella and Pippa for these great eggs. Alice is joining in the big Easter egg hunt. And check out these amazing home baked hot cross buns. We have a question that's been sent in. Why was everyone cheering for Jesus when he entered the city, but by Friday they took, they asked to crucify him? Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, we, we talked about that a little bit last week, but not too much, that things change so quickly. You know, everybody had these amazing hopes for Jesus that he was going to change everything and maybe be a king and save them from the Romans. And then the next thing you know, he's been arrested. And I guess the people who were in power, sometimes the people who are in power now, don't like it when someone comes to challenge that and they saw Jesus as a really big threat. So they did everything they could to make sure that the people turned against him and that they could arrest him and charge him with all kinds of crazy stuff. So it's a big change in a week, isn't it? Thank you. Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him, why didn't he stop him? That's a really good question, Astrid, because actually Jesus seems to know exactly what Judas is doing. And he even says to him at the Last Supper, go and do what you're going to do quickly. So he must know that he's going to be arrested. And I think he realises that all of this is only going to end one way. Even if he stopped Judas, somebody else would find a way of arresting him and trying to charge him with all these horrible things. So actually, Jesus' choice is, does he use sort of power and violence and things to stop them arresting him? And then he's maybe he's just as bad as they are. Or does he do something else and something quite surprising? And that's what happens next, what happens over Easter. I have a question. When Lazarus came out of the tomb, is it the same as when Jesus came out of the tomb? Aha, so Iris is thinking about Lazarus and our friend Bob here, who came out of the tomb uh, all covered in bandages and was raised from the dead by Jesus. Now, the thing is, his sisters and everybody, his friends, would be really happy to have him back. But actually, Lazarus was still going to get old again and eventually die. And everybody would be really sad that he died. And I think the difference this weekend with Easter is that Jesus says... Look, it doesn't matter. The worst things in the world have happened to me and I've died and I've been buried. And yet 
I've come back and there's no need anymore to fear anything that happens. No need even to be scared of death because now this is a fresh start for everybody and we're going to make everything new and I'll be with God and I'll also be with you for everything that you have to face. So that's something to be really joyful about this Easter, I think. Thank you to Eloise and Ida, Ashton and Iris, for their great questions. Our cathedrals have some candles if you want to say a prayer. Here are our prayers for this week. Dear God, we light a candle for our community, for those living alone, for families and friends, young people and older people. We pray for hope in all our hearts this Easter. Please let this light shine bright. We light a candle for all those looking after us and protecting us, for all those making decisions for our safety. We pray for hope in their hearts this Easter. Please let this light shine bright. We light a candle for those who are not well and for those whose loved ones have died. We pray they can still have hope and comfort in their heart this Easter. Please let this light shine bright. We light this candle in Dunedin in the south of the Southern Hemisphere. We pray for the whole world as we wake this Easter Sunday that we can have joy and hope in our hearts. May this light shine brightly. Alleluia. Amen. If you like this, um, please tune in next time and I hope you have an amazing Easter. Bye. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Astrid. Happy birthday to you. We've, We've been, been the bright, bright lights. lights. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter, everyone. See you next week.